Hi there, welcome to Fostering Resilience. I'm Dr. KJ Foster. In today's video, I'm answering the question, what's the difference between Al-Anon, Naranon, Famanon, and Coda? This is a part of my new Q&A series, my new Q&A playlist, where I am providing answers to the most common questions that I encounter and that I experienced as someone who has recovered from an addiction to alcohol. Actually, when this video is first posted on July 20th, 2020, I'll have 12 years of successful recovery. I'm also married to someone who has successfully recovered. He's approaching 18 years and we have a son who has recovered from an addiction to drugs. To learn more about me and my experience, check out the description or hop on over to my channel and check out my channel trailer. But I don't wanna to waste too much time talking about myself. I want to address the question at hand. So this is something that for people who are brand new to the recovery world, the recovery process, the recovery journey, there are programs to support the loved ones. So to support friends, family members. I, I don't restrict it to just family members because you can be in a relationship with someone who is experiencing an addiction to alcohol, drugs, um, other issues, and not be considered technically the family, right? You could be um, in a relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, friend, coworker that you're really close to. So I prefer the word loved one because the reality is, is that if you are in a relationship with someone who's experiencing an addiction, your life and your relationship is absolutely impacted by that. So there are these programs that are available for loved ones to support your own recovery journey because you yourself as the loved one are in a recovery process as well. And that's my mantra to the family members and the loved ones that I work with in treatment is that everyone in the family is in recovery. And the more that you can focus on yourself and your own change and your own growth, that's really the best possible thing that you can do for your loved one is to help yourself. So there are these programs that are available, Al-Anon being one of them, and then there's Naranon, and then there's Famanon, and then there's CODA, and there's others. I know that Smart Recovery has a family program now too. I have my own family program through Fostering Resilience, which I'll talk about at the end. But let's look first at Al-Anon, Naranon, and Famanon, because CODA is kind of in this like separate category by itself, and I'll explain that uh, when we get to that. But first, Al-Anon, Naranon, Famanon. So Al-Anon was the very first uh, support group for family members, okay? And that, um, Alcoholics Anonymous was the very first 12-step program, and of course, all other 12-step programs have evolved, been created uh, as a result of Alcoholics Anonymous. And there's probably a 12-step program out there for anything and everything that you can think of. There's so many of them. And that just speaks to the utility of the program, the, you know, the effectiveness of the program. They're really very, very effective. I myself, you know, worked a 12-step program for many, many years, and I attribute it to saving my own life and, and also the lives of my loved ones. So I truly 100 percent believe in 12-step recovery. So having said that, Al-Anon is a support group for loved ones of individuals participating in Alcoholics Anonymous. This is like the general rule of thumb, right? So if you have a loved one who's participating in Alcoholics Anonymous and alcohol is their primary issue, then you probably want to go to Al-Anon because you're going to meet individuals who are going through the same thing that you're going through. Naranon is a support group for loved ones, family members of individuals who are participating in NA, Narcotics Anonymous. And Famanon, the difference between Alanon, Naranon, and Famanon is Famanon is a support group for loved ones, family members of individuals who are participating in any you know, program. It, it, it's not restricted to even substances. You could be you know, addicted to gambling, um, sex and love anonymous, you know, uh, any other program. It's all for, for the family members of individuals who are struggling with these issues. And, and so you can use that as like a, a general rule of thumb, right? Okay, if I have a loved one who's in AA, then I want to go to Al-Anon. If I have a loved one who's in NA, then I want to go to Naranon. And if it's any other 12-step program, maybe Famanon. But 
what about the individual who's struggling with a family member who's in, who's in active addiction, right? Or or the, the family member or loved one of someone who maybe they're committed to their abstinence, but they're not really working any program at all, any 12-step program. So then what do I do? I would recommend then you look at what your loved one's primary issue is. If their primary issue is alcohol, then of course you're going to feel more comfortable and you're going to feel more of uh, a identification with the people who attend Al-Anon. Whereas if your loved one's primary issue uh, is drugs, then you're probably going to identify more with a Naranon group. But for me, really the bottom line is where you feel the most comfortable, right? So I know for me, as someone who was participating in Alcoholics Anonymous and having a loved one who was in active addiction at the time, I felt more comfortable going to Al-Anon. But I can tell you that in Al-Anon, as opposed to Naranon, which is really geared more towards drugs and multi-issues, you know, alcohol and drugs, multiple forms of drug use, and, and Al-Anon is the same way. There's lots of crossover that takes place. So I say, wherever you feel most co comfortable with the group of people that, that are supporting you. And that takes some time, you know, to identify. So it may take you going to like five or six different types of meetings to identify where you feel the most comfortable. Now, what about CODA, KJ? You, you didn't mention CODA. Okay, so CODA, I say that CODA is in this category all by itself because CODA, although it supports a lot of family members, loved ones who have, you know, individuals are in relationship with, with people who are struggling with substance issues, it's not just substance issues. It's really about the codependency in and of itself. So you can be in a codependent relationship with someone who's not struggling with substances. The, the more, um, the more uh, common denominator, so to speak, is that you're in a relationship with somebody who's, who's needy and dependent and you are obsessed with uh, controlling them or fixing them. You can be in a relationship with someone and not, like I said, with, with a family member, with a friend, with a coworker, but what is really significant about it is that codependency. You're somebody who is struggling with that codependency. And you can be somebody like myself, who I truly believe that codependency was my first addiction. I was addicted to controlling and fixing my family members, but then that led to my substance abuse and ultimately my addiction to alcohol. So codependency anonymous, CODA, is a 12-step program to support any individuals who are struggling with codependency. So you're going to find like a mixture of people within that program. And also it's a program that I recommend for anyone who is in um, Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous or Cocaine Anonymous or, or any of those others, because if you're uh, working that program, you're ultimately going to become a sponsor. And as a sponsor, you're going to be working with other individuals who are new to recovery and sobriety. And what comes with that is some codependency issues. So it's really a good support program. I'm a, a big advocate of like incorporating as many things as, as, as make sense for you and what you're, what you're coping with. So I've included links in the description to all of those programs so you can go and check it out and get some more information. I also want to mention to you that there, I have a, a program that's a free daily recovery support group. And what's different about the Fostering Resilience Program is that it's all inclusive. So it's not, um, it's not, uh, it's, it doesn't uh, attribute to any 12 step, you know, adhere to rather is the word. It doesn't adhere to any, it's not based on any 12 step program. It's open to if you're participating in a 12 step program, if you're participating in smart recovery, if you're participating in any other recovery program or you're not 
participating in any other recovery program, you're welcome to attend. Really, the, the commitment is to the recovery process, and it's open to family members as well. I, as someone who has experienced both sides, being the individual with the addiction and the family member, I see a lot of value in, in those um, coming together and working together and gaining insight from each other. So depending upon whatever day you attend, there could be a number of family members that are participating, or there could be predominantly individuals who are um, in different phases of their recovery process. They're early in recovery. They've been recovered for many, many years. So depending upon when you attend, you're going to get a different mixture, but there are they are available every single day and they are absolutely free. I also offer workshops for family members and for individuals. I have a family recovery workshop that is geared towards those who are brand new to the recovery process and learning about all the things that, that you need to know in order to grow in your knowledge, your awareness, and your own change. And what's interesting and unique about those workshops is that they inclu also include a mixture of individuals who are in recovery themselves and the loved one family member, and also family members that participate together. So husbands and wives, uh, boyfriends, girlfriends, adult uh, children, uh, and, and their parents. So it's really a very uh, unique combination, and I think that it works really, really well. And I also have an advanced recovery workshop and an anger management workshop, and there are links to those in the description as well. So I hope you've found this video today helpful in addressing that question and uh, you and your family, please uh, stay and be well. And hopefully I'll see you back here again next time. Namaste.